The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I'm your teacher, Koki Christopher Tituwanda. You have a teacher of physics. We shall be looking at from three physics today. And we're going to continue with the correction of the assignments that we had in the last lesson. And it consists in identifying three mistakes in the drawing that we're going to see below. This is a diagram. So in the last lesson, uh, you were taught about qualities of a good scientific diagram. And we learned something. So we're going to be applying the things that we learned in the last lesson to correct this assignment. So let's uh, look at what is wrong with the diagram we have in front of us. The first thing you observe the diagram is that it is not a simple side view of what we intend to draw. We're normally supposed to draw a diagram in two dimensions. That's why I've seen 2D there. There are too, there are too much details in the diagram if you observe very well based on what we learned in the last lesson. You are seeing double lines. Look at the feet of the tripod. We are seeing some double lines, and there are some issues about the lines. The issue about the line is that it has sketchy lines. Take a note of what is happening at the feet of the tripod. The opening of the picker has been closed off. Meanwhile, we learned the last lesson that if you are drawing a scientific diagram, the opening of the picker is not supposed to be closed off. But that's not the case with the diagram that we just saw above. The item inside the beaker is actually shaded. But from the things that we learned in the last lesson, you were told not to shed. So the fact that it's shaded makes it a bit a uh, kind of problem. So our focus today was not just the assignment, but we actually have a new lesson, lesson 8, titled Safety Rules for Working with Different Equipment. If you are working in the laboratory, it is important that you are safe and that the equipment you are using are also safe. So there are two things happening here. The safety you are going to be observing pertain to one, the equipment you are using, and secondly, you, the user. So this is our lesson plan for today. We're going to start with our objectives, the prerequisites for the lesson, the real life situation to make you uh, be able to actually use what we are going to present you in this lesson to solve a real life situation, a real problem that you can encounter as you do your business from day to day. Well, we're going to have some learning activities. Uh, a set of exercises to put to practice what we're going to be transmitting to you in the course of this lesson. We are going to summarize our lesson and then to have an assignment. Okay. So what's our objectives for what are our objectives for this lesson of today? Oh I expect that by the end of this lesson. The learner should be able to name the safety rules for working with different laboratory equipment. Which means that if you are given 
-hmm. and the equipment to work with the laboratory. We should know the safety rules involved with working with such an, uh, an equipment in order that you stay safe and the equipment also is preserved. We are expected at the end of the lesson to be able to explain the different safety rules for working with different laboratory equipment. So, the prerequisites we need to have information about laboratory equipment. So, it depends on what the case may be, whether it's about their names, being able to identify them, different aspects of issues are concerning uh, equipment that we can use in a physics laboratory. So to test our, our prerequisites, we are going to go through a set of equipment here. We just observe them first of all, and then we are going to have an opportunity to look at them. Then you will say the name of those equipment to show that you can uh, name them. Okay, so you are seeing one on the screen. So which piece of equipment is this? This is the second equipment we are presenting to you. You can just observe it, there is no name there. As we are going through them, trying to just try to see if we can recall the name of this equipment. We are going to come back to it, to identify it, and then together we name it. Which piece of equipment is this? This is the fourth equipment. Which one is this? This and that one number five. Just observe them as we go along and try to store your answer so we can write it down, actually write it before we come back to it. Number six is also an equipment that you use in the laboratory. Number seven, you can see in front of you, number seven, it's an equipment we use in the science laboratory. How do we call it? Number eight is under one. How do we call this equipment? How do we call this on screen? What are you saying in front of you? How do you call that? Okay, so oh, which piece of equipment is this? This time around, we are going to show you the answers. So if you said Newton Mecca, you are right. So it's good for you if you said Newton Mecca. Meanwhile, the second piece of equipment we have, number two, corresponds to a stop. Watch. So if you said stopwatch, you are correct. Okay. The third is actually an electronic balance. The fourth is a measuring cylinder. Number five is a clinical thermometer. And the sixth is okay. So we call a the fourth, a measuring cylinder, because it is actually a cylinder, first of all, and then it is used to measure uh, the volume of liquids. So it's a cylinder and it's used for measurement. So we call it a measuring cylinder. Then the, the fifth is a clinical thermometer. That's what we use in our homes. Uh, our mothers use them. We use them when we are feeling hot or, so that we know whether we are very sick or not. We also have the normal laboratory thermometer. That's what we use in the laboratory to carry out our experiments. I know in the coming lessons, uh, we are going to see more about what these equipment actually do. So number seven is a triple beam balance. You can you guess it right if you choose triple beam balance. So let's see if you got number eight right. What is number eight? Number eight is a double Beam balance. Let's look. If you observe very well, look at this. The, 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 tri the triple beam balance. There's a beam here one, two, and three. And uh, when we shall get to measuring mass, the lesson that we shall be look, look, dealing with measurement of mass, you shall see exactly how we can use the triple beam balance to measure uh, the mass of an object. So we shall see the rule of this beam and point at right away. Uh, the second beam and the third beam. Each of them has an important role that it plays in the measurement of the mass of an object. Then this other case is we have a double beam balance. Instead of three beams, it has just two. Two here is one just behind, and uh, closer to us is the second one. 
Okay. So the ninth is a helical spring. It's a spring, it's coiled and uh, when you get to lower six, or if you don't go to lower six, anytime you see a spring balance, it has a helical spring inside. So this is the helical spring. As you can see, it's a helical spring. And the other one, look at my pointer, is uh, we call this an overflow can, also called an Eureka can. Okay, so here we are now up to the real life situation for our lesson. Mr. Richard has received parcels from different family members to take abroad. To avoid any parcel being rejected at the airport for exceeding the weight limit, he takes the parcels to the physics laboratory to measure their masses using an electronic balance that has a maximum limit of 3 kg. Should he be allowed to use this electronic balance for the measurements? So, now there's an issue. Uh, we are going to acquire some knowledge in the course of our lesson, and at the end of it all, we are going to see exactly how can you use the knowledge we have acquired to handle this real life situation, and also encourage you to do the same. All the activities for our lesson. So, which safety measures should be taken when using each of the following equipment? We have a Newton meter, which are the safety measures involved when it comes to using a Newton meter. We saw a Newton meter in the previous slides. That's the stopwatch, which are the safety measures involved to identify them already. So, which are the safety measures involved in working with them? Which are safety measures involved in using a, an electronic balance? So, a measuring cylinder, a clinical thermometer. As we go through them, be imagining uh, what those safety measures are. If you can write something down, it will be good for you. Because we eventually come to it, so when we come back to it, you can compare what we are going to propose to you with what you yourself have written. The laboratory thermometer, the triple beam balance. The helical spring, the overflow can, the standard passes. Okay, so which are the safety measures involved with working with a Newton meter? Make sure you don't put a force on it that is more than the maximum force that you can measure. Uh, Newton meters are actually composed of springs. As we shall see later in form three, there is a rule that uh, says that beyond the certain limit of mass or a weight applied to these springs, they can be damaged. And if they are damaged, they will cease to function normally. And so it's important that you make sure you don't put a force on it that is more than the maximum force that you can measure. Most often when they are fabricating more equipment, they indicate on them. They offer the ceiling, the upper limit of weight that it can support in terms of an instrument or an equipment like the Newton meter. The stopwatch. So, how which kind of measures you take to handle a stopwatch safely? Keep it away from water. It uses battery, it needs to be dry to function well. So if you put if, if water enters in it, it will affect the screen. There are even some types of stopwatches that are not electronic, analog type. There are some that use pointers. And we expect that um, if water enters in it, there are some components that are made of iron and moisture and oxygen, you know, from chemistry provides a favorable condition for rusting. And once your equipment is getting rusted, you are sure of soon losing an equipment or obtaining wrong results when you measure. That is if the stopwatch will not completely just get damaged. Avoid rough handling it since it is fragile. It can break. Once the piece of equipment is fragile, 
what we're actually saying in other words is that it can break as you see all stopwatches irrespective of whether they use pointers whether they are analog or digital they are fragile if they fall down they will break if a heavy object falls on them they will break so watch out and be careful when you work with stopwatches after all if it gets bad you may have to pay as a student laboratory or your school may force to waste some money just to buy a uh, new ones that they could use maybe to replace them in the laboratory. If you want to replace uh, the batteries for those uh, whose batteries are covered with screwdrivers, use an appropriate screwdriver to avoid wearing out the screws. For you to use a screwdriver and undo some screws on our stopwatches, we should use the appropriate screwdrivers because if we use the wrong screwdrivers, we will end up damaging them. And subsequently, if our stopwatches get bad, it will be impossible for us to change, uh, to change them with ease since we have caused the screws to be worn out. Okay, when it comes to electronic balance, we have different brands of electronic balance. What is common about them is that most of them use electricity. We're going to see that uh, when the batteries are flat, change them immediately. When the batteries are flat, change them immediately. There are some batteries that, there are some that use batteries, uh, like the batteries found in remote controls, that if it is flat and you allow it to be there for some time, it will start leaking. If it starts leaking inside the electronic balance, the next issue is that you will not just have the problem of battery to solve, you may also have to actually maybe buy a new balance, which is expensive. I'm sure you know that. Because with the leakage of the battery inside, it will start rusting. And the rusting means that very soon it will stop functioning, even if you choose to put a new battery inside. Don't let them fall from a high place. Don't allow any heavy objects to fall on your electronic balance. What is the reason? They are fragile, so they can break. Electronic balance, uh, each of them is a piece of fragile equipment that you must be careful the way you work with it so that you don't end up breaking it. Okay, so for measuring cylinders, there are a number of issues for about measuring cylinders uh, before we start seeing the points we have. Measuring cylinders can either be made of plastics or glassware. And what happens is that the ones that are made of glass are very fragile. If it drops, it will break. And if it breaks, there is a high likelihood that uh, if a piece touch up your hand, you will actually wound it. You may bleed, you may lose blood, may even be contaminated with uh, a disease. You don't know which kind of chemicals were in it. Or the, the, the sanitary state. So be careful if you are using a uh, measuring cylinder that is made of glass. So they are fragile, so we should be careful so that they don't fall down and break scenes. Any broken piece can hurt someone, it can hurt you. It can hurt even your friend. It can hurt your teacher. You can also choose to use a measuring cylinder made of plastic. That way the risk of having a broken uh, piece is greatly uh, reduced. So if you use a plastic measuring cylinder, the risk of breakage is reduced and the possibility of having yourself hurt or your friend or your teacher is also reduced. So for E and F, we have uh, the clinical and the normal laboratory thermometers. So which are the measures that we should actually take when working with them. Okay? So for clinical and laboratory thermometers, take care not to break them. Uh, for, for those thermometers to function, there's a liquid inside that we call a thermometric fluid, a thermometric liquid. Sometimes can be alcohol as well as can be mercury. And we know that mercury is a toxic substance. So there's a possibility of a drop of it getting into your system and uh, 
That will hurt you. So avoid breaking them. Be careful not to break them. Also, with those glasswares, when they fall, they will break. And they are not so cheap to buy. That means breaking them means that you are also going to lose money. You know that one of the liquids used inside, okay, I've just mentioned the point, is mercury. And mercury is a poisonous substance. For the triple beam balance, store in dry places so that the metallic components will not rust. That's a fact for triple beam balance. Also make sure not to damage it with very heavy objects. Make sure that there is a maximum limit you should not exceed with load. Make sure you know the maximum limit and uh, you don't exceed this maximum limit. So for the helical spring, watch out for mass that can cause it to exceed its elastic limit because the instance that it exceeds its elastic limit, or uh, when, when you reduce the mass from it, it will not go back to its initial length. And that means your helical spring uh, has automatically become useless. You just need to replace it. So take care. For your overflow can, there are some issues with the overflow can. There are some that are made of metals, there are others that are made of glass. So for the ones that are made of glass, you should wash out. Know they are fragile and can break. Do not let them fall from a high position. Take note. And in case of any breakage, be careful not to wound yourself with any broken piece. There are so many of iron which can rust. So after usage, store them in dry places. Make sure you wash them. Make sure you leave them in a good state. Make sure you leave them dry. That way, you don't run the, 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 the risk of having them rusted and getting a damage in the short or long term. If you have the opportunity to choose, select the one which is made of plastic. There are actually some overflow cans that are plastic, metal plastic, so you can go in for those ones. So for standard masses, since some are made of iron, always store them in dry places so that they don't rust. That's for standard masses. They are made of iron. You provide favorable, favorable conditions, they will rust. Why water and oxygen, iron will rust. So watch out. The other issue about standard masses is that they have weight and can enjoy your leg. While you are manipulating them from a high table, I just imagine a 500 gram mass falling on top of your shoe, on your toe. You feel hurt. Even a 100 gram mass. So masses have weight and can enjoy your leg. If they fall from a high table, so be careful because they can fall and hurt you if they do. At this point in time, we are going to differentiate between mass and weight. So, mass is measured in kilograms, while weight is measured in newtons. I want just to remind you that uh, mass, uh, anyway, weight, weight is a force, and it's measured in newtons, just like all other forces. Mass is constant everywhere, while the weight of an object varies from, from place to place. Your weight here on Earth will not be the same as your weight if you go to, if you go to the moon. If you happen to find yourself in Jupiter, your, your weight will not be the same. So the mass is constant everywhere. Your weight varies from place to place. Even if you move from here towards the North Pole, right here around the equator, if you move from here towards the North, North Pole, your weight will equally change. But all this while, your mass will remain the same. So they measure the amount of matter in the body. That's by definition, mass is the measure of the amount of matter in a body. Meanwhile, uh, weight is the measure of the, of the amount of force acting on an object due to acceleration or uh, due to gravity. So as a result of as a result of gravity, there's a force that acts on an object, and that's the force that we call the weight of that uh, substance. Mass can never be zero. Unlike weight, weight can be zero, where as gravity, 
is zero, like in space. If you have an object in deep space where there is no mass very close to it, its weight will be zero. There are some other situations where the accelerated gravity is not actually zero, but that the weight of an object is still zero. So, which can be zero? Like people who are found at the International Space Station, they experience weightlessness. In a lift, you experience weightlessness also. But it doesn't mean that your weight is actually zero, so that acceleration gravity is zero, but your weight uh, is zero under those conditions. Mass is a base quantity. Meanwhile, weight is a derived quantity, it's a false. It's a derived quantity. Mass is a scalar quantity. That means it has just magnitude only, no direction. Meanwhile, weight, oh, sorry, is a scalar, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vector quantity. There is a typographical error there. So weight is a vector quantity. Meanwhile, mass is a scalar quantity. Mass can be measured using any ordinary balance, e.g., a top line balance, uh, spring balance, triple beam balance. Meanwhile, to measure weight, we can use uh, Newton meter, e.g., a spring balance. We can have weight by calculation. Mass is volume times density. Meanwhile, the weight is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we are about to respond to our real life situation. Let me read again for you what it is. Mr. Richard has received parcels from different family members to take abroad. Normally at the airport, you, uh, there are agents that check to be sure that you are getting onto the plane with the required load. So they have to be able to check. If the load exceeds the limit, they, you have issues with the airport agents. So, to avoid any parcel being rejected at the airport for exceeding the weight limit, he takes the parcels with his laboratory to measure their masses using an electronic balance that has a maximum limit of 3 kg. Should he be allowed to use this electronic balance for the measurements? Uh, when you're concerned to uh, respond to real life situations, there are some key issues you need to know. There's something called 3 minimal criteria. That is, as a student, you are supposed to show understanding of the problem. Show that you understand the problem, and then be able to use the tools that were acquired in class, that were acquired in class today, to solve the problem you have at hand. And then also be able to make a reasonable conclusion, an informed conclusion, based on your usage of the tools. That's the knowledge you have acquired in class today. So, since the balance can measure up to a maximum of 3 kg, in order to avoid the balance from being damaged, he should not place all the parcels in the balance at once, but rather place them incrementally, making sure the reading on the balance does not exceed 3 kg. Take note, we are dealing here with safety. Safety rules for working with different equipment. If it exceeds 3 kg, you are going to lose the balance. In summary, oh, today we, we have learned about the fact that when using a measuring instrument, make sure that the quantity placed on the instrument does not exceed the maximum it can handle. That's a key point to take from the lesson of today. Handle with care measuring instruments that are fragile. Each measuring cylinders and make sure and, and make from glass. So any fragile equipment we mentioned uh, with measuring cylinder, they are because we have a host of them. Make sure we handle them with care because they break. Mass is always constant and the weight varies from place to place. Don't forget that. So for our references, uh, you can contact ordinary level physics in modern approach by Mbako I hope. Uh, by Grace Publishers, and uh, there's also explaining physics, the GCS edition by Stephen Popper from Oxford University Press. 
our assignment to measure the volume of the tubular solid, we are provided with measuring cylinder, water, irregular solid. Write down a safety measure you must take while working with the instruments mentioned above. That's our assignment. So when you go home, you have to apply uh, what you have learned today to handle it. Different shape, mass, and weight. Oh, okay. So with this, we come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson uh, will be lesson nine, and which I'm dealing with measurement of mass. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyom. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Gani bana, ma tege mot. Gani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa kina bia jinkido. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bien ni